All right, so now we're going to actually do tapering. And I wrote up this while I was sneezing, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you what I wrote up. Basically, we're going to taper towards the center point, either at the top or the bottom. So tapering won't make a block shorter. It'll just make it narrower. So the Y coordinate, the Y height will always remain the same. So I grabbed the center of the block at the top and at the bottom. Um, and I also grabbed the taper rate at the top and at the bottom. Um, now the reason that the bottom taper rate and the top taper rate, I just kind of arbitrarily assign them right now. Later on we'll actually get into detail at, on that. So here we've got, uh, this is where the logic comes in. Any given edge, any given vertical edge of the cube can be tapered only if there's nothing attached to it. So if there's anything to the left, it can't be tapered. If it's anything to the top or anything to the front, it can't be tapered. So each of the four edges, in turn, has to check two orthogonal directions to see whether it's free to taper. And if it's free to taper, you just move the, the point towards the center based on how tapered it is. Um, and this shouldn't be complicated, uh, and if you are confused about it, I'm sure that pausing it and looking at the code uh, will, will reveal everything because it's very simple. So what does this look like when we go into Unity Hint Play? Well, it actually doesn't look too bad, um, but there are some bugs. So here you can see the tapering working as intended over here. And you can see how we do have uh, some, some not nice, but uh, reasonable tapering going on. But where the tapering fails is between the chunks. Because our is transparent, um, we'll assume that anything that's not on our chunk is transparent. And therefore, your tapering will get uh, uh, kind of awkward and aggressive. Oh, that's interesting. So there are two bugs. Uh, the first is that uh, is transparent will count things that are tapered as non-transparent when they should be counted as transparent. That one's easy to fix. But the other problem is that um, uh, is that on the borders between, you're going to get ah oh, here. I'll show you down here. It's easiest to see on flat spaces. So you can see this crack that's caused by each of these bricks not realizing that these bricks existed. So this is a spot where there are four colliding... Uh, I'll show you. So here is a spot where there are four colliding br uh, chunks. And because of that, all, the, all of these bricks are invisible to the other chunks. And therefore they are all considered to be transparent. Now we could try and fix that, but I actually uh, don't mind it. If you want to try and fix it, you can. I think you'll find that it's harder to fix than you think. Um, tapering really isn't intended to be used like this. Um, I'm just using it like this to show you that it can be. What we're going to have to do is make tapering uh, something that's very much an adjustable thing. Uh, that's one of the reasons we can't fix this bug right now either, because right now every single brick in the, on the planet is considered tapered and therefore every single brick on the planet would be considered transparent if we, up get, if we updated our, our is transparent function. That would be wrong. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the player can taper things and if the player doesn't taper anything uh, then it won't be considered, it won't be tapered. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and for every chunk we are going to have a taper map. Now you might be wondering why is it separate from the normal map? Um, well, the easiest reason, the easiest reason, it's the real reason it's separate because it makes it easier to read both maps. But another reason is because it allows us to put some functionality uh, into the logic that would have been difficult to do if they were uh, where if they were like a, a double byte that we had to split apart all the time. So the taper map is a byte. That means it has a 255 0 to 255. We are going to use uh, the top half for the top taper and the bottom half for the bottom taper. So we're going to have 16 states for bottom taper, 16 states for top taper, and we're going to get them just by modulusing and dividing. It's actually not that complicated, although I made it sound complicated. Everything starts off completely untapered, like that. And then down here in the part where we determine what the taper is, we actually, uh, um, here it is, Instead of doing it this way, we have to do a grab, so it's uh, a byte t 
taper val equals taper map x, y, z. And then top taper equals taper val percentage 16, uh, whereas I guess that would be taper val divided by 16, whereas bottom val equals taper val modulus 16, but we have to divide both of those by 16. Uh, or should we be dividing by 15? I think we need to divide it by 15 so we can have a value of 1. All right, so there we go. And then here we're going to go ahead and just opt out of this if we're not tapering. If top taper equals 0 and bottom taper equals 0, uh, or sorry, top taper does not equal 0 or bottom taper does not equal 0, then go ahead and apply the tapering. Otherwise, we don't need to do all those is transparent calls. Uh, they're not real slow, but they're slow enough that it, it would be stupid to just do them over and over and over for no reason. All right. So now we have to give the player the ability to be able to taper, but we'll go ahead and take a look and make sure that we are no longer tapering here in game mode. Everything should be crisply square again. Yep. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into player I.O. Here we are. And we're going to make it so that the scroll wheel will taper. So here we have it so that it changes block type. We're not going to do that anymore because we're going to be shifting over to an inventory system soon. So we no longer need to do this. Deleted. Oh, we don't want to delete it. We just want to... Uh, so what we need to do is we need to... Um, need to get the, the block in question and then taper. So block, uh, no, no, sorry, chunk, uh, chunk equals terrain dot active terrain. Do we actually have terrain stored here? Yeah, we do. Terrain dot get chunk. Uh, and then we have the X, Y, Z already, except for we actually don't. I'm going to go ahead and put these outside because we need them for everything, so there's no reason to worry about it. It's not like rounding to int is going to be a slow procedure, so I think I can afford to do it every frame. X, Y, Z. If chunk equals null return, um, the chance of that happening is extremely remote, but that's okay. Uh, actually, it should be impossible. Whatever. Uh, we'll do it anyway. And then we will go ahead and say chunk dot set brick taper, uh, or rather, yeah, that'll work, um, x, y, z, and then wheel, uh, and then false, oh, and then input dot key, get key, key code dot left shift, there we go. And the reason for that is we want to be able to... Uh, I'll show you in a minute. Basically, if you hold down shift, you get a slightly different version of the tapering. And I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, we don't actually have to have a different function for the two wheels. Just the one wheel will work fine. All right. So let's go back into chunk and change set brick into set... Uh, get another copy of set brick for set brick taper. Public void set brick taper. Int x, int y, int z. Uh, and then it was, uh, uh, I think that the mouse scroll wheel is a float, float, delta, and then bool, shifting. All right, so if this looks familiar, it should, because this is the same thing. So if we get here, we actually can change the byte values. So we'll go ahead and take the byte value. So byte current taper equals map, uh, uh, taper map. We'll be using the taper map for water as well, by the way, just in case you were curious. We actually already have the math for getting that. We might as well just copy it from up here. Alright, so, if we're mouse wheeling, 
without shifting, then we're just changing the top layer. Actually, we don't even want the float values. We want the integer values. Like so. Actually, I'm sure you're familiar with this crap. Actually, there's no reason to even do it like that. Watch as I do boring things very slowly. Some debugging just in case and then we just say taper map uh, uh, XYZ equals taper valve oh and we have to regenerate okay I didn't think it would work out quite that easily just casting to bite there we are All right, let's watch this explode in first person because this is no way this is this is going to be correct in the first run here. We actually did it right. It just didn't regenerate properly for some reason. The taper value is correct. Uh oh. It looks like I have all of my UV coordinates upside down. Shh, I'll fix that quietly somewhere else. Oh, you know what it is? We're modifying the value for the empty block. Oh my gosh, we're so stupid. Um, so over here in... We're so stupid. It's not your fault. It's okay. Um, oh man, we did break it. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I'm sorry. Because uh, the other one is Rhett Dell, isn't it? It's what you get for doing things willy-nilly and not uh, not looking what you're doing. Crash. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That's pretty cool, don't you think? You want to see me make a tree? I can make a tree. Let's go over here and make a tree. By the way, the uh, collision mesh is also automatically updated for these, meaning that they actually take up less than one block of space. More of a lamppost than a tree. Still, you get the idea. So, wait, we can see through that brick. Oh my gosh, what a horrible travesty. Let's go ahead and change it so that is transparent takes that into account. Uh, here in chunk. Is transparent. Here it is. I'll just put some bricks down. Uh, up, up, 
Gle Schuf. Perfekt. Perfekt. Yep. Perfekt. Couldn't ask for better. That's tapering. We're going to use it a lot. A lot, a lot. 